friends. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where I typically like to make book videos as well as homeschool videos that often involve books. So thank you for stopping by. Today's video is a reading wrap up. So I have finished up my books for February and I've had a really fun month. I participated in Historathon, which was a historical fiction readathon. Of the six books I read this month, four of them actually were for Historathon. The first book I read was The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Now, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was excellent. It's kind of, it was a little bit bigger than I anticipated, but it was really well done. Kate Morton has definitely become a favorite author of mine. So, this book is a book about a girl who was, I think she was four years old, and she was found abandoned on a ship on its way to Australia. And upon arrival, the dock master found her and took her home, and then ended up taking her in and raising her. For the first 21 years of her life and then he ended up telling her that she is not a part of their family and it really threw her for a loop and so the story then is basically her trying to find out about her past her trying to understand how her family could have abandoned her on a boat at four years old it's a book with multiple timelines and it follows present day where nell is older and she has a granddaughter named cassandra and she's kind of passing on this story to her because Nell in her lifetime wasn't able to solve it and she's kind of putting it on Cassandra to figure out what happened to her. And the book also tells a story kind of from the beginning of the, the family who then will in time end up abandoning her on the ship and kind of explains all the reasons why or what happened. And so it really is a good book. There's some really strong characters. I liked the characters. It kind of has a, a lot of central themes of just family, loss, really kind of, I guess more like loss of mothers is a central theme in this book. And the book has a, a number of plot twists that I thought I kind of had it figured out or I thought this was what it was, was doing or who was responsible for that. But it surprised me on a number of different turns, which I do appreciate. If I can predict it, I don't appreciate the book as much. So I did like that. And then the author definitely kind of wrapped things up at the end. So I really recommend the book, especially if you like books about finding your story or finding your family. It's definitely kind of have that, it has that family saga sort of feel to it. This next book, I picked up kind of on a whim at the library because it was February. And I didn't have a romance book on my list. And this one is called The City Baker's Guide to Country Living by Louise Miller. And it's really cute. I gave this, I think, three stars. It was a good book. It wasn't anything that's gonna stick with me, but I gave it three stars. I actually forgot to mention that I gave this one four stars. So it's basically about a girl who moves to the country because she needs a break from the city. She's made some poor decisions and she starts working at this inn. It's about her struggle as she's realizing that she wants more out of life. She wants to make better choices and surround herself by better people. I heard about the book on booktube and it was described kind of as like a Gilmore Girls romance story. And it was, it was definitely cute. It had some, some real typical romance plot lines where they meet, they fall in love, something happens, and then there's some resolution from that. So it, it was a good story. The next book that I read this month was the group read for Historathon um, and that book was The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. So the book is set in post-Civil War Spain after the dictator has been put into place and is still oppressing the people. So this book in particular follows the story of a character named Anna. Her parents were taken and murdered during the Civil War and so it's just her, her sister, and her brother and they are still living in the society that views them as children of the Republics or Republicans, I forget. This man named Daniel came into town. He flew into town. He's an American from Texas. He's 18 years old and he wants to be a photojournalist and he kind of sees this opportunity and try and expose some of the hardship and the terrible things that are happening in Spain at this time, but it's very dangerous to do that. So their story is him pushing boundaries, forming a friendship, a, a, a relationship of sorts with her She's just in, in such a state of, of fear that it isn't something that she can pursue a relationship with an American. 
she would put her family in jeopardy. So that was some of the best plot lines is just this suspense and this intensity that's around her family. The whole time I was thinking, oh my gosh, they're gonna come and get them. They're gonna take their children. They're gonna, all these things I was just so anxious about. And the last thing I wanna mention about this book is it has this storyline of infants that are being kidnapped from people by the government and that that truly happened. It, pretty much from like the 50s to the 80s, about 300,000 babies were kidnapped or taken from mothers. And they were mostly in this way that the, the moms would give birth and then be told that their babies died. So it wasn't super overt. It's just this tragedy in this whole country. And actually, I think they have just started prosecuting some of these awful crimes that, that happened in Spain in those 30 years after the, the Spanish Civil War. So I do recommend this. I, I think I ended up giving it four stars. I liked it. I, it wasn't mind blowing for me. So more like a four star really liked it. So for the next book that I read for Historathon and gave five stars because it has been a book that I have just loved. I, it blew me away. I actually ended up talking about this book as the book that makes me go nuts when I, I did the chocolate book tag and it talked about what book has made you go nuts lately. This book has made me go nuts. I have, I really liked it. It's The Bear and the Nightingale and it is about a girl, Vasya, who grows up in the Russian wilderness north of Moscow. She grows up in a family where her mother had some magic or her grandmother, something like that. There was some kind of magic in her family. And then culturally speaking, there is a lot of belief in spirits and fairy tales and things like that as well. And so Vasya grew up with kind of this ability to communicate with the, the spirits or the um, demons, they call them, the house demons, the forest demons. And then when her father decides to remarry, he marries a woman who is deathly afraid of those ideas and demons and, and things like that. So she is very harsh with, with Vasya and that relationship is very strained. Her life becomes part of those fairy tales or one of those fairy tales, especially the one that involves the frost demon or the winter king. I liked his character interacting with Vasya and I thought it was really interesting. And there was definitely some parts that I was a little scared and I was like, what is going on? Is she gonna be okay? And, but it, the whole time it kept me very gripped and very interested and, and it wrapped up really well. Like it, I was very impressed with the end and, and I picked up the next book in the series pretty much right away so that I could finish reading this, this story. So five stars, I highly recommend it, especially if you like a little bit of um, fantasy, but not a ton of fantasy. I don't know. I don't know how best to put it, but I, I really liked it. So highly recommend this. And the next book that I read and really liked, it's actually a middle grade book that I have been wanting to read because I feel like it would be a really good read aloud for my kids in a couple years. And that book is The War That Saved My Life. It's about a girl named Ada, and Ada is um, disabled. She has a club foot. She lives in London with her mom and her brother, and her mom treats her terribly. The mother character just oh, makes me so mad. And so she ends up escaping her mom and getting on a train, going to the country with her brother to live with a guardian named Susan. And Susan's character I really liked. She just had a lot of depth. She clearly had some personal struggles, some other things, but she had this caring personality where she was gonna care for these kids, grudgingly, not knowing how, doing the best she can, but knowing what was right, and then eventually falling in love with them and just caring for them deeply. And it was just, it's a very touching book. I also really liked Ada, the Ada character, because, sorry, the glare. I really liked her character, how her character was portrayed in this book a lot. Because sometimes I feel like books will the minute you take a character out of a setting and put them in somewhere else they're suddenly changed and they're better and she wasn't she still had major struggles she still had major things she had to work through to kind of heal and love herself and see value in herself and realize the truth that none of what has happened to her in her life was her fault even if her mother told her it was and so it's just a beautiful book i highly recommend it and the last book i read in february was not for Historathon. It actually came out of a video I did where I did a try a chapter video for fantasy recommendations. Then I'll leave a link to that video. And the book that I ended up picking 
from that video was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It's about this man named Cal, and he is a magician, and he's able to travel between different worlds. And so in this book, there are different Londons. So there's, there's Grey London, Black London, White, and Red London, and he's originally from Red London, and he acts kind of as this ambassador for the throne and brings correspondence between. Then he meets this girl, Lila, from Grey London. That London doesn't have any magic. And she is poor, and she's a pickpocket and a thief, and she just really has this kind of scrappy character. And he meets her, she pickpockets him, and he comes after her, and so they start to form this relationship, more of like friendship, I guess is the better word for it. And then they get kind of tossed into this adventure where he has something he shouldn't have, he's trying to get it back, and all sorts of trouble kind of follows them as he is trying to make right the poor decision he made in accepting this thing to begin with. So, it was a really good book. I haven't actually rated it yet because I just finished it, but I think I'm gonna give it four stars because I really liked it. I haven't read like enough fantasy to, to be like, oh, the magic system, da, 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 da. I don't know. I don't know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was believable. I thought storyline was good. Like I, I, tra I was tracking with it and it made sense and I really enjoyed the characters and I enjoyed the, the interaction of the characters where they were just friends helping each other in this terribly complicated, interesting situation that they ended up in. So I'm glad I picked up some fantasy. And so again, thank you to Brittany over at Plants and Paperbacks recommended this to me. So thank you, Brittany. It was good. I really did like it. Anyway, so those are the books I read in the month of February, and I really did enjoy my reading month. I enjoyed the historical fiction. I enjoyed stepping out a little bit of my comfort zone with fantasy. And please comment down below if you've read any of these books, or if you think that based on what I'm reading, I might like something else. Please let me know. That is all I have for this video. So have a wonderful day and take care. Okay.